Nichibutsu Mahjong is the latest entry in the strangest series on the Famicom. You might be asking, where were Nichibutsu Mahjong 1 and 2? And the answer to that is, we've seen them, only under a different name. Namco published those under the title Family Mahjong. But it was Nichibutsu who developed them, and based them on their arcade games. For some reason, the two companies split after that, and both of them released their own third game in the series. Mahjong is a set-building game similar to Rummy, only played with tiles instead of cards. The version that's popular in Japan is Richi Mahjong. The key difference being that in Richi Mahjong, you have to build certain types of hands in order to go out. And Nichibutsu specialized in a variant of Richi Mahjong, which reduced the number of players from 4 to 2. There's actually three different games in Nichibutsu Mahjong 3. The first game mode has you take on a series of opponents, and it's the most straightforward, normal Mahjong. You choose from eight opponents, each with a different skill level, and then have to play a full 16-game match against them. The other mode that uses the standard Mahjong interface is Mahjong G-Men, and this is something unique for the Famicom. It's a port of one of Nichibutsu's existing arcade Mahjong games. For this mode, you pick one of three characters to investigate, and you get this big full-screen graphic of them, which is fairly unusual on the Famicom. These kinds of graphics were commonplace on the PC Engine CD, but pretty uncommon on the Famicom with its limited graphics capabilities. Before the match, you can spend some of your points on a power-up that will affect your opponent, like making their hand visible for the entire game. And if you manage to beat one of these people, well, it's one of those arcade Mahjong games, if you know what I mean. They don't get totally nude, but you do get to see them undress. The way that the interface for playing Mahjong works is that hitting A will draw a tile from the stack, hitting left will do Chi, where you draw the opponent's most recently discarded tile in order to make a run of three, right is Pun, where you do that to make a set of three, and up is Kan, where you do that to make a set of four. B will reveal your hand once you've completed it. This is a bog-standard two-player Mahjong game, the kind we've seen plenty of times before. It doesn't do anything wrong, but there's also nothing that makes it stand out. But then there's the third game mode. This is a puzzle game where you're trying to complete Mahjong hands in order to clear out the row. You can cycle through the suit of the tile that's falling, which means that for the Winds and Dragons, you also cycle through those. And there's also a tile that will cycle through a sword and a betting stick. The sword will eliminate any tile it lands on, while the stick will reveal tiles that will complete the hand, if it's there when the row fills up. I feel like you have to be already good at Mahjong in order to play this puzzle game. For me, I wound up in the long piece situation, where I had one tile that would complete a row, and then I just had to wait around forever until it showed up. And since rows are 14 tiles across, it made this pretty unfun for me. Though I will concede that for this puzzle game, if you're good at Mahjong, then you might be able to get some entertainment out of this, while I couldn't. And that seems to be the reaction out of Japan for this one. It's just another Mahjong game. Nobody seems to even care enough to post screenshots of the women from Mahjong G-Men. Nichibutsu Mahjong 3 tried to do something different, at least, but I think the things that it tried to do differently weren't really successful, and so it becomes another Mahjong game to add to the pile.